Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday live stream. This is one day before we actually get into the Bitcoin conference in Nashville. It's going on right now. I will be there. So, of course, if you are there, uh, let me know and uh, we'll do a little meetup or something like that. But today we got to talk about a lot of things. So let's just jump right in. First of all, I think we all know the market is uh, not doing it's not going in a skyrocket pattern going straight up, which we knew it would never do that. However, today is a little bit interesting because we see uh, quite a bit of a, we'll say a pullback, right? I want to say a crash or a dump. I'll just say a pullback because everybody likes that word. <laughs> That's it. Well, we got a mark cap of 2.4. Everything's in the red. I'm not going to go through this. You know this. You've checked your portfolio about a thousand times. Why? What's going on? Well, just like the thumbnail and the title suggests, I think there's, some, there's a lot of things going on. There's the macro environment. There's our environment. And then there's just some stuff that doesn't make any sense to me and it's FUD and it's just irrational, but that's what the market is. It is irrational sometimes, or it's somebody else just saying, you know what, I'm gonna use these stories to take a little profits off, off the table, which I gotta tell you, I'm totally fine with. If you may notice, and I've talked about this about a bajillion times, it is rule number five, take profits. You should have done that anyhow. So here's what we got. I'm gonna talk to you about Mount Gox, we talked about this on NFA Live when it was uh, me, Guy, and Ben. I told you why I think this is a ridiculous story. People will sell, but here's why it's just there to scare the hell out of you. So this is what's going on. Bitstamp <clears throat> starts Mount Gox creditor repayments. And that just happened about four hours, maybe six hours ago or so. So here's what we have. The crypto exchange, uh, Mount, excuse me, not Mount Gox, Bitstamp received all Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ether, and started repaying creditors on July 25th. That would be today. So it has been transferred from Mt. Gox into those wallets, if you would like to track that, which it's always good to be, to have as much knowledge as you possibly can. There's a link in the description. It is from Arkham Intelligence, and you can track all the wallets from Mt. Gox and where it's going. And look at that, it even has everything labeled for you to make it super simple. Bitstamp, a lot of Bitstamp. Cold wallets, who knows where that is, and they'll probably label them at some point. So you can check that out. So if you're kind of worried about things, just give it a whirl. So here's what we have. Also, Mount Gox's UK creditors will have to wait a few more months. And I know people are kind of worried because, oh, people are going to get it and they're gonna sell. They will sell, but I don't think it's gonna be that much. And I'll tell you why. But I have to give you balance and know what's going on. Only the creditors in specific regions, US being one of them, are going to receive their Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash today. And then one, two months, you're gonna see this same stupid story pop up again to scare people yet again, and they're going to sell yet again. So you can look at it in two ways. I look at it as like opportunities because I was kind of worried that everything's going to go straight up and it didn't, thank God. And now I'm just like, well, this is great. Now I just have to, I get to keep dollar cost averaging because I never feel like I have enough anyhow. So here, this, here's a quote from the organization. While UK customers will not be included in the first tranche of distribu distributions, UK customers can expect to receive their restored within the next few months and will receive more information in due course. Man, they're really taking their time. So how does, that, how does that work? Well, it states here, Bitcoin's price doesn't seem to be affected by Mt. Gox creditors as on-chain data suggests they aren't selling. This is following Kraken's distribution to creditors. And this quote is from Ki Young Ju, who was on the uh, channel about a year ago or so from Crypto Quan. He said, look, Mt. Gox creditors received Bitcoin four hours ago. Again, this was this morning, super early. There has been no significant spike in hourly spot. Trading volume dominance, hey, Bitcoin dominance, uh -huh. or Bitcoin outflows on Kraken since then. So what is it? What the heck is going on? Well, I will just tell you like this, and we talked about this on the NFA live show. This is from Alex Thorne, and he's, and he say, he's from uh, lead researcher in Galaxy. He says, look, as, as a refresher, Mt. Gox lasts almost 1,000 Bitcoin, 940,000 Bitcoin from a hack, but they only recovered 15% of that. That's 141,000 or 63 million at the time. You know how much that 141,000 Bitcoin is worth now? It's worth about $9 billion. And then also, which is kind of interesting is that all these people that receive Bitcoin, 
because they held Bitcoin. I mean, not because they wanted to, because they had to, because the Bitcoin was actually with the creditor service. Because of that, they received Bitcoin Cash. I'm more worried about Bitcoin Cash being dumped, but as far as like the amount, it looks like it's only, that was recovered, 67 million. So I don't think it's gonna be that bad uh, as well. So again, $9 billion. And then if you take a look at this right here, it'll talk about early payout haircut, 11%, estimated percentage of recovery taking early payout. That's 75% because the 25% got sold off to funds. And they said, look, just give us a haircut. You can take it. I just want my money. And then they're gone. And the funds have absorbed that Bitcoin. So again, I just don't see this as like the big thing, but here's why it affects the price in some way, shape or form. Because <sighs> the market is irrational. And that's just normal. That's par for the course. Again, and it's pretty great when you when you when you look at your at at sure because I have Coinbase because I'm stuck in I'm not I'm stuck in America but I'm an American citizen and uh, that's mostly what I'm using for dollar cost average I'm like hey look at that I got a nice nice discount looking pretty good but you've also got people who do leverage and margin trading and they get liquidated because they're like what it really went down that much <laughs> if you went long on Ethereum boy I feel sorry for you that's just how it is. Then of course that leads to herd mentality because they see the price go down, which means maybe the order books go a little bit thin, people start to sell off. The bots pick that up and go, wow, they're selling, I need to sell too. And they start selling. And there's a problem with slippage, one, two, 5%. Then people are trying to play arbitrage uh, around the different centralized exchanges. They put in the stop loss orders and just it's a big chain and goes around and around. And that just leads us to stuff like this. So I'm not too surprised about it. It's just how, things go. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Hopefully it eased your worries a little bit as far as the ET or the uh, Mt. Gox participation and sell off. Let me make this crystal clear. They will sell. They'll sell some, but I'm not for sure that they're going to sell off the 140 or 92 uh, thousand Bitcoin that they have right now. I just don't see them selling 100% but we'll see. Anyhow, that's all we have for that piece. And then also, I we covered this yesterday, uh, the Ethereum ETF, and we didn't have the data for BlackRock. And you can see that on the 23rd of July, we had a net positive of uh, 106 million as far as the flow uh, for the Ethereum ETF, which was pretty good for the first day, I, I got to admit. Now, Grayscale does Grayscale things. And uh, of course, they dump. And then yesterday, we didn't have the data for uh, BlackRock. And everybody was telling me, like, we well, got to hold off because BlackRock's going to come in hot. They didn't. So BlackRock, as you can see under this section right here, BlackRock Etha, they went from $266 million on the first round or the first day of ETF sales to 17.4. Fidelity beat them. Actually, Fidelity kept very static. $71 million the day before. 74 million yesterday. Who knows what it's going to be today? So again, there is a negative effect. And uh, that's where we're down as far as net flows at negative 26 million. So I was thinking about this. And some people would say, well, Rob, you understand what we talked about. You know, the uh, everybody at Grayscale is just dumping because they don't like the fees. Because you can see right here, Grayscale. ETH -E at 2.5% or 0.15%. And I was like, oh, okay. So they would probably dump and most of them would probably stick with Grayscale. They're like, okay, you know, you kind of screwed me on that, on those rates, but you know, I'll stick with you because I mean, I don't want to figure out anything else. I don't want to figure out cold storage and how to buy that on a centralized exchange. So I'll just stick with you guys at 0.15%, which is, if you look at the fees is the lowest, but that didn't happen. You had 484 here and 15 million here. You had 326 yesterday to 45 here. So yeah, there is a little back and forth, and maybe this is new new players, but that's not the case. That's what the Ethereum ETF is. But, and this is a big one, you have to remember just what happens to the Bitcoin ETF, which was the most successful ETF of all time. And this is from heyapollo.com, links in the description, you can check that out. Holy smokes, I didn't see, you know there was a thousand Bitcoin inflow from BlackRock? Did they not get the memo? Well, good for them. So it's pretty good. And that's not what I wanted to show you, but congratulations. This is looking pretty good. But uh, again, 
FUD reign supreme, even though you had a thousand Bitcoin bought up. People are scared about macro and Mt. Gox nonsense. So anyhow, I just want to show you this. This started on da -da -da, January 10th. And from there, the Bitcoin flows, it just kind of went in a straight line, or excuse me, ascending pattern. We can see here, and then there's a little bit of a drop down here, but then there was just a nice steady flow of Bitcoin. And as this was happening, again, January 10th, what did that look like? Well, price action wise, it sucked. You're gonna see that on January 10th, that was six in the morning, around right here, the first day, everybody was happy, like, woo, it's looking pretty good. And then the next day, around 8 a.m., everybody's like, yeah, let's dump this. And they just started selling. And that's what, you know, ETFs, and some people say, well, you know, why, why was there, there, there such a dump? There was a, there's a multitude of reasons. Really what it comes down to is this. Uh, there's more sellers than buyers, and that's just how it goes. So if we overlay this, again, we were kind of going on a nice upward trajectory, were we not? And what were we doing here for the price? Pew. And over the last two weeks, it, geez, is that the amount? Wow, 48,000 to 38,000, 10,000. Wow, it's quite a bit if you think about it. But this got me to thinking, if you're into ETFs and you got a you know reasonable amount of money and you, are an investor and you're used to, you know, stuff like these huge, wide, crazy days, S&P 500 being down a whopping negative 1.9% or over a month being down 0.58%. If you're used to like stuff like this and you get over here and you start to see like, oh, okay, well, I can make a boatload of money just by buying this cheap as it goes down because I've done my research. I was instructed by Fidelity and BlackRock and everybody else to, you know, where things are going. I'll just kind of hold on to this for a couple of weeks and see where it goes. And I'll be damned if they didn't do a great job because this is what it looked like afterwards. From here, January 11th, that's this piece. When in doubt, zoom out. And what happened after that, after the last, after two weeks or so? And here we are today. So I just look at all this stuff and going back to this one, this Ethereum ETF, if these guys got into ETH you know, years and years ago and they're just like, oh, okay, we're, we're gonna do the same playbook. We're gonna start dumping ETH Ethereum. Ethereum will then crash like we did with Bitcoin because that's what we do here at Grayscale, we dump. And we're just gonna let it crash and then we're gonna keep buying along the way and we're gonna make a boatload of money. Like it just makes sense. This is this makes sense to me. Tell me where I'm wrong here. But it just makes total sense for they would just dump on the market, then scoop it up as they usually do, and then you know, dump on everybody again when things get overheated. Anyhow, that's that's just what I see. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But the question then lastly is this is uh, well, if that's going on, who else is dumping on us? Kathy Wood is. So I know everybody likes Kathy Wood. I like Kathy Wood, right? Uh, but this was just kind of brushed over today. Kathy Wood's ARK Investment sells about $8 million of its own spot Bitcoin ETF. Now, on this channel, I will applaud that. Good for you, right? She never said she's going to hold forever. She's not going to be the only or the Michael Saylor and say, hey, I'm gonna buy every single top that's out there. They wanna rebalance their portfolio. And to that, I say, bravo. That's what you should be doing. And that's why I have the rules right there. But here's what we have. ARK's investment strategy aims to let no individual holding take out more than 10% of an ETS portfolio. This is to maintain diversification within its funds, meaning it is likely to continue rebalancing its weightings if ARK B rises relative to ARK's other holdings in the fund. So when you hear these stories about like this person's buying and they're buying and this looks great and we've got, you know, even Mara just, just bought $100 million or whatever it was of, of Bitcoin. You have to remember one thing. They're not here because they're trying to change the world. They're trying to change their pocketbook. 
And it's good that they're doing these things. And maybe they are here to change the pocketbook. I can't speak for them. Who am I? Just some guy in front of, in front of a green screen talking to his computer. But you look at this and it's a good reminder for you to take the profits when you see them. So we did this, this whole presentation about take profits, right? And this is from my video where I said, avoid these five mistakes. There's a link in the description, you can check it out. And, we're, and it's, it's where I talk about essentially the five rules, right? Don't leave anything on exchanges. I've learned my lesson on that one. I think the Mt. Gox people did first. I just didn't listen to them. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave things on exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way. So I just want to remind everybody, and I, I said this on February, Bitcoin, Bitcoin isn't true wealth. True wealth is your health, time you spend with your family, experiences, peace of mind for you and everybody else in your family. Bitcoin can help you get those things, but it is not those things. Please remember that. And this, of course, is going to be the same thing you're going to see. Take profits at a 2x or whatever it is, but, you know, look at 10x. And I just want to remind you that predictions are worthless. I mean, they're, they're fun and they, and, they, and they give you hope and hopium. That's great. But everybody revises their predictions. I know when I started to do that, I was way, way off. I mean, but maybe they come true. Maybe Jack Dorsey's 1 million by 2030 or, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's 500,000 by the end of this year. Who knows? But I remember, there's a difference between the public and the private. What you say in public versus what these people are doing in private. That's Peter Thiel. And in 2022, he went to the Bitcoin convention in Miami. And he said, Bitcoin is the future. And we're investing heavily. But then this article came out in 2023, one month before Peter Thiel talked about the advantages of Bitcoin during a speech, his VC firm Founders Fund had already offloaded an eight-year bet on cryptocurrencies. I don't know why he didn't just say that. And then just recently, in June 28th, they asked him again, have you sold any of your Bitcoin? We're just curious because, you know, you're a big proponent, which is fine. And... Um, I'm just gonna have you listen to it. It's it's actually pretty fun. It's like 20 seconds. Hold on, hold on. Let me make sure you hear this. Just to make sure. Pop, 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 pop. Take a listen. Have you sold any of your Bitcoin? Uh, I I still hold some. I yeah I, I you know there, there are all these ways I I I didn't buy as much as I should have um, and uh, I I I. I I'm, I'm pro. I, I, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to go up that dramatically from here. From here. I used to have a stuttering problem when I was a kid. I don't think Peter has a stuttering problem. I think he got caught with a question he didn't want to answer, and then there he is. But again, who cares? If they want to sell, that's fine. Remember that it's up to you to determine what's the best thing for you, when to take profits, and and when not. And I'm just going to leave you with this. So we talk about all this stuff and I kind of give you a little bit of a balance here and there, but here's some good news. And this is where I think things should have gone a long time ago, but they didn't. This is Stephen Fulop. He's the mayor of Jersey City, former Marine. Hey, I like, you. good man. Another guy who served in the service country. And he said this, not my normal subject matter in a post, but I'll share anyway. The question on whether crypto Bitcoin is here to stay is, is over the crypto Bitcoin, which one won? The Jersey City Pension Fund is in process of updating paperwork to the SEC to allocate percentage of the fund to Bitcoin ETFs, similar to what Wisconsin Pension Fund did. And they put 2% of the total fund into Bitcoin ETFs. It will be completed by the end of the summer, and I'm sure eventually it will be more common. Let me say that again. Completed by the end of the summer, and I'm sure eventually it will be more common. So I know things kind of, maybe we overemphasized where things should be right now. Maybe you think that we're right on track, or maybe you think that this is just a big lull session. Whatever it is, just remember, everything takes a little bit more time and just stick around. I think you're gonna like where we're going. It just may take a while to get there. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. 